Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And today, I am answering your most asked question. And no, it's not how to edit like Flying Kitty. That will be another tutorial. Today's lesson is gonna be what to do with mixed frame rate footage. Do I edit in 23.976 or 30 or 59.94 or 60 FPS? What do I do if I have footage that kind of has, oh, okay, we're answering a lot of stuff today. I'm also gonna give you a refresher on your sequence settings, show you how to make custom sequence settings and make sure that your sequence is actually the thing that you need to be editing in in the first place. I'm also going to show you how to kind of correct some render errors in Premiere. There's there's a lot of stuff that's going to be discussed today. All good stuff. But mainly what to do with the mixed frame rate project and kind of what ultimately you should be delivering the final product in what frame rate and all that good stuff. We're, it's it's going to be a technical episode today, but it's still, hey, we're going to make it fun. We're going to, we're going to be okay. All right, let's just jump into it. Open up Adobe Premiere because we are getting started. All right, boys and girls, Adobe Premiere is open and in my project over here, I've got a bunch of clips ranging all the way from 23,976 FPS all the way down to 119.88 FPS. And what do all these numbers mean? What is drop frame time code? Is 23,976 different from 24? Technically, there is no difference in drop frame time code from its other counterpart, right? So 23.976 and 24 FPS are actually the same thing. They're just methodologies of counting the different frames. The old way of doing it was related back to broadcast and they would have to do everything in 24p because drop frame didn't exist. But then when drop frame came around because of progressive and interlace technology, then it kind of switched over. There's a lot of nuance and historical data behind all of these different numbers. But what you need to know is that there is no difference between 23.976 FPS and 24 FPS. Yes, I am recording right now in 24p because that's what this camera records in, but I export all of my videos to 23976. There's no sync delays, there's no anything. It's just a way for the computer to count the frames. 2997 and 30 FPS are the same. 5994 and 60 FPS are the same. 119.88 and 120 FPS, they're all the same thing basically. Now in my research, I did read that if you have a timeline that's like 300 minutes long and you have one at 24 and one at 23976, the one at 24 will actually be a few seconds long but I'm not gonna test that because I'm not making videos that are 300 minutes long right now. I'm making short, simple videos and I'm not affected by time code or frame rate or whatever. Okay, now that being said, you have to know where you're going with your video. You're not gonna wanna shoot a bunch of stuff in 60 FPS if you're planning on delivering in 23976 or 24 because things might get a little bit dicey. So I always tell people this, you have to know where you're going. What is the end result you're getting to? If you're doing a gaming video, a lot of gameplay and that kind of stuff, 60 FPS might actually be the thing that you want to use. Use, but if you're making a YouTube video, a tutorial, a how-to, a cooking video, whatever the case is, you're gonna wanna be more towards that 24p, 23976. And 30 or 2997 is kind of a weird one because it really only existed in television, NTSC broadcast type stuff. And a lot of people aren't really doing that anymore these days. So hey, you can use 2997, 30 FPS if you want. I prefer 24p or 23976. So what if I have 60 FPS, 30 FPS, and 24 FPS footage all in my project? Ian, what do I do? First, you have to look at all your footage and see kind of what you have the most of. If 80% of your footage is all 60 FPS and then 20% is in a different frame rate, you might want to consider doing everything at 60 FPS because the majority of your footage kind of exists in that realm. And the same goes for the opposite. If you shoot a, most of your stuff in 24p and you have a couple clips that are in 60 or 120, you're not necessarily going to want to do your video output in 120 or 60 because a majority of your footage doesn't exist there and you will have problems stepping up in frame rate. So 23,976 is going to have a much harder time translating over into higher frame rates than the other way around. You can drop frames and bring things down. 60 FPS will look good at 23,976, but the opposite is not true. And I'm going to show you exactly why right now, right now. So I've got a bunch of sequences kind of set up. One's at 23.97, one's at 29.97 and 59.94, and then the non drop frame equivalents right here. So I'm gonna drop this clip right here of this car driving by at 23.976 onto my 23.976 timeline and Premiere gives me no errors. And here's this car driving by looking really good. Now you'll see if I go frame by frame, the car is moving in every single frame because it was shot in 23.976 and that is what my timeline exists in. So everything is looking good. If I drop this same exact clip, into a 59.94 timeline, Premiere is gonna give me this mismatch warning. This clip does not match the sequence settings. Change sequence to match the clip settings. I'm gonna hit keep existing settings, which is gonna keep my sequence at 59.94. Now check this out, guys. I'm gonna go frame by frame and I'm hitting the button, but the car is not moving. And this is a very weird thing when you put 23.976 footage into a 59.94 timeline. Two frames, 
it's just still, it's static. It's absolutely static, not moving at all. And then I go over one frame and it moves. And then we have a blank frame and then it moves. And then we have two blank frames and then it moves. And this is something really weird that you notice if you go frame by frame. But if you actually watch this, it doesn't look tremendously different. Maybe it's a little bit stuttery, maybe it's a little bit laggy, but overall you don't really notice the difference when you're playing it back, but there is a difference. It's kind of laggy and it's kind of stuttery, and maybe you don't notice while you're working on it, but certainly if you have 60 FPS footage next to a clip that was shot in 23976 conforming to 60 FPS, you will 100% notice the difference. So those of you that have used a dolly or a slider and you shot everything at 23976 and then you drop it in a 60 FPS timeline or whatever, you're gonna notice a weird lag and stutter and that is why because Premiere is trying to compensate for frames and it's like adding some in to get to the 5994 but then it's like dropping some out because it, it's stupid is what it is. So take my advice. It's probably why you're watching this video in the first place, but edit your project in the frame rate that you have the majority of your footage in and that will solve a lot of problems. So I'm in my 23976 timeline. I'm gonna delete this clip right here and I'm gonna drop in this clip of a car driving by at 120 FPS and I wanna make this slow motion. But when I drop it onto my timeline because I shot in 120 FPS, not SNQ, uh, it just plays in real time. So this is 120 FPS footage in a 23976 timeline. Now there are two ways for me to slow this down and get it to be nice, buttery, smooth, slow motion. One is clicking on the clip, hitting Control R to get my time controls and then lowering the speed down to 20%. You can go all the way down to 20% at 120 FPS. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have an exhaustingly slow video of this car driving by, and it looks really, really nice. Now, if you don't want to change the clip directly on the timeline, there is another way that you can do this. If you come over to the clip in your bin, right click on that and go to modify, interpret footage, you can actually set the frame rate of that footage in Premiere. So instead of using the 119.88 frame rate, I'm going to assume this frame rate and I'm gonna type in 23976 and click OK. And now that click, ladies and gentlemen, will actually be conformed into slow-mo at 23976. So I no longer have to slow it down in Premiere. It will just automatically exist in slow motion. Now, I personally don't like to do it this way for one reason only, and that's because it changes the frame rate in my bin to say 23976. And so I assume that it is not a slow motion clip based on this frame rate. I like to see a higher frame rate because then I know, oh, hey, this is a slow motion clip. I can slow it down if I need to. And when I'm doing all my projects, I actually label all of my high frame rate footage a different color by right clicking and coming up to label and then changing it to mango for 120 FPS. And for my 59.94 clips, I will right click, go to label, and then I like to change this to purple. So now if I ever drop some footage on my timeline that's 60 FPS, it's gonna show up in purple and I know, okay, I can just hit control R and lower this down to 50%. So I can get the nice half speed 60 FPS look and conversely, if I drop a clip on my timeline that is mango, I know it is 120 FPS and then I can hit control R and go down to 20% and now I have some super buttery, awesome slow motion. So for my own editor brain, I'm gonna right click on this and come up to modify and modify it back to its original frame rate. And I'm also gonna label it mango. Haha. -ha. And this is just a nice like OCD thing that I kind of developed while I'm editing this stuff. And I like to be able to see the frame rates in my project because then in my brain I go, oh, okay, I can slow that down if I want. But if it's always labeled 23976, I'm not gonna really register that it is slow-mo unless I watch the clip. And when you're kind of crunched for time or working really fast, sometimes you just don't do that. <sighs> okay, Ian, wow, that's, that, that's a lot of information you're dropping on me right now. Yeah, I know, I'm assuming that's why you're subscribed to this channel. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, hold on, let me take a minute to just say, smash that mother subscribe button, hit that mother thumbs up, hit that notification bell down there because we're dropping knowledge bombs all the time on learn how to edit stuff. Oh, you want another one? You remember at the beginning of this video when I said sequence setting stuff? I'm also gonna give you a refresher on your sequence settings. Okay, fine, challenge accepted. We're gonna come down here to this new item button, come up here to sequence, navigate over to the settings portion of the new sequence dialog box, and you guys are gonna wanna mirror exactly what I have here. So editing mode, custom, you might be having issues on your timeline if any of these other ones are selected. If you're like, oh, I'm just gonna start a 1080i timeline. No, okay, you don't know really what you're doing because 1080i, the I in 1080i stands for interlaced. The P in 1080p stands for progressive. 99% of most things these days are progressive. They are no longer interlaced. I kind of dealt with CRT technology and like broadcast television. Not very many people are shooting interlaced anymore. So if you're starting a timeline that is interlaced and you're working with progressive footage, you're gonna run into a bunch of issues. Just don't 
Don't do that, set it to custom. Editing mode, custom, time-based, 23,976 frames per second, frame size 1920 by 1080, pixel aspect ratio square. Do not choose any of these other ones, please, for the love of God, choose square. Fields, progressive scan, that's that P that we were talking about, upper first and lower first, indicate interlaced, and we're not working with those, we are working with progressive. Display format, 23,976, sample rate 4800 hertz, and iframe only MPEG for the preview file format, and then what you're gonna do is click on save preset, and then you're gonna name this something that you can't possibly screw up. And if you wanna put a description, you can, but I'm not going to because I like to live life on the edge, click OK, and then that custom sequence will show up down underneath your custom settings. And I would recommend making custom sequences for frame rates and dimensions that you're used to working in. So for me, I have 1080, 23976, UHD, which is almost 4K, 23976, and vertical video, 23976, that is nine by 16 instead of 16 by nine, so Instagram, Snapchat, all that stuff. And it works the same way, you would just do a custom sequence, you would plug in all the numbers that you need, and then you save it with a name that you'll remember, and then it goes into your custom folder, and that is how I start every single project. I go straight to my custom folder, and then I'm off to the races. No dealing with RE Cinema or weird DNX, HI, 1080, I, P, Q, R, no, none of that. Set your custom presets, people. If for some reason you guys are playing your timeline and the timeline indicator is not moving, I can't get it to break right now, but if you're hitting play and your timeline indicator is not moving, there is a very quick fix that I will show you right now on how to fix that. If you navigate right up here to sequence and go to sequence settings, I want you guys to just turn this preview file format from iframe only MPEG to QuickTime Apple ProRes 422HQ. Click OK, it will tell you that you're about to break stuff even though you're not, click OK, and that will swap over the timeline preview to Apple ProRes, and that will usually, nine times out of 10, fix your playback issues. Once you've gone to Apple ProRes, you can always go back to iframe on the MPEG by repeating the same process again, and then you're done. Unbelievable, I cannot believe you just taught me so many things in a matter of minutes. Ian, I am for sure subscribing to your channel if I haven't already. Thank you. By the way, I just drank two of these. You know I have a coffee addiction. These things are the best. Not sponsored, I just love them. And I'm hopped up on caffeine like a mother. <sighs> okay, let's calm it down a little bit. What did we learn? in today's lesson. We learned a lot of different things, mainly if you have a lot of footage that is in one frame rate, you're gonna wanna kinda gravitate towards that frame rate for your final delivery of your product. If you're doing something in the gaming world, a lot of stuff with like digital graphic design, whatever, 60 FPS might be your friend. But pretty much for everything else, for every other video that you're doing and working with, 23976 or 24P is your best friend. If you happen to randomly be shooting a show for television, 2997 or 30 FPS might be your friend and you might actually be shooting in that gross 1080i format that nobody is really doing anymore. 1080p is kind of taken over the world. So just know the difference between progressive and interlaced. Also, the lower frame rates don't progress up to the higher frame rates because you're having to add frames. So if you have 23976 frame rate and you try to put it in a 5994 composition, it's gonna start adding a bunch of weird frames and it's gonna stutter and kind of look just laggy and a little bit strange, so avoid that. But know that you can go from 5994 down to 23976 because you're dropping frames and you actually won't know notice the difference in quality because you're losing extra frames that you have instead of adding extra frames that never existed before. And that's it guys, I, 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 there's there's a lot of numbers. I said 23,976 way too many times for this video for me to feel comfortable, but if you made it this far, thank you so much for listening to me ramble on about frame rates. This stuff actually is very important. You guys are coming to me because you wanna make the best videos possible and I am here to give you as much knowledge as I possibly can. So hooray for both of us. If you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing to my channel, dropping a thumbs up on this video and dropping a comment in the comment section below. Also, in the video description, you will find a link tree to a bunch of goodies, a bunch of stuff that I really love that you can get your hands on to kind of step up your post-production game overnight, instantly, in a matter of minutes. So go check out everything. All my social media is in that link tree link as well. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time.